the penetration of EVs is increasing in the Indian market and the OEMs are launching new products and new features in their lineup. And Simple Energy has launched a new generation of its Simple One electric scooter. And to tell us more about the new generation and Simple Energy's plan, we have Mr. Suhas Rajkumar with us, the co-founder of Simple Energy, and he'll tell us about the expansion plans and what the new scooter offers. Welcome to 91 Wheel Suhas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> So, tell us about the new Gen 1.5 of the Simple One. Uh, so, Gen 1.5, uh, it comes with a complete uh, you know, stack of Super Stack uh, Generation 1 itself. I think it's fully fledged now. It will be rolled out for all the customers, old or new, doesn't matter. Uh, that is one major update there. Second is, we have improved our IDC from uh, 212 earlier to 248 now. I think that that that, that is a major update for us. Uh, primarily, uh, you know, for improving our real world range as well. So it will impact by 10% on that. I think that is a major update there. And apart from that, uh, we have done some software changes, a better calibration and better uh, battery health as well. I think that is a minor change there. And that is what generation 1.5 will speak about. And it will just improve the confidence of the consumer on the product going forward. And our 2,500 customers who are out there using our scooters every day. I think they are, they are, it will only boost their confidence going forward on the brand. So the Gen 1.5 will be available for, for the Simple One only or the Dot One as well? So it is across the platform So it's and it is available from right today. Okay. Right? Uh, so it's it's already rolled out. It's a software update that goes in and uh, no major changes on cosmetic or any hard hardware inside. Uh, but yeah, that's why it's called the 1.5 rather than Generation 2. Okay. So what are your plans for the future? Uh, how are you planning to expand in terms of dealership and service centers? Yeah, so we have uh, 10 dealerships and 10 service centers as of today, as we speak, uh, which are live. Uh, in the next 15-20 uh, days, we should have about 10 more added. Uh, by this financial year, that is uh, March end, we're looking about uh, 40 to 45 stores across India. And by next financial year, we are looking about 400 odd, uh, you know, stores across India and, and I think that is a strong plan that we have laid out. We have built our team accordingly in the last six months and our six months of experience in sales in various markets like Maharashtra, Goa, Kochi, Karnataka, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, we are still not there. Uh, we'll be there in the next couple of weeks uh, and Gujarat of course. Uh, so we have this slight experience of South southern market at least where we proudly and confidently say that our simple ones are doing well. And the customer data is helping us expand rapidly now and I think it's time that we should expand. Our capacities are capable of doing that. And uh, we are a well-funded company as of today. So it will only help us uh, you know, boost our sales going forward. What do you think about the northern market? Yeah, so north we are looking in, uh, in, in next financial year, about April, we are looking at Delhi, uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, uh, UP. Uh, four major markets there. I think we should be there from April. April first week, I think we'll be announcing at least seven to eight stores. Okay. Uh, by by August, we should have about fifty odd stores just in North. Okay. I think that's our aggressive plan there, and we are currently in the top, in the midst of identifying locations and dealers there. I think more or less we are on track of that. So, how do you differentiate yourself from other competitors like Ola and Ather in terms of your product, service experience, and dealership experience? See, our uh, three major USPs product, uh, safety and service, I think we work on that uh, front very strongly. Uh, 2,500 scooters right now out there and we have no fire incidents as much as it is spoken about. No major uh, issues in the uh, the product itself. Our warranty claims are the least in the industry as of today. Of course, uh, the size is very small mm. comparatively, but we are confident we will be doing the same over the period. I think hopefully by uh, 50,000 scooters. We should. Uh, I should repair the same. I should report the same numbers to you, and I'll be glad that I'll do that. But uh, apart from that, uh, you know, if you look at the competition asset, there's no scooter in India to even offer a range of this uh, size uh, that we're offering, and the, the, the performance side of it, uh, the local integration and the vertical int vertical stack of the entire scooter itself is a big USP. I think apart from that, we are working on you know uh, improving our battery tech. Uh, as much as we can, be it on the safety side or thermal side, that gives you a longer life on, on, the, on the battery itself. I think that is a comforting part to a consumer to buy in. Okay. So that's that's a major USP for, for us and I think we'll continue to focus on that and I mean that's primarily the big differentiator. I don't see any other player offering safety service and product in three in, in one single go. Okay. Uh, some of the other players have some other issues. So. So, are you focusing on electric scooters only or we can expect you to see in the motorcycle space as well? See, a lot of people are talking about motorcycles but the vibrity doesn't stand out as of yet. 
definitely see for us we are a R&D company so we have a platform always and for us to replicate a platform is about 8 to 12 months of time mm-hmm. so coming out with a product it's not a big deal uh, but at the same time we need to re- really look at are we really selling for the consumer or are we really selling for no one like there, it should not be a alien market for mm-hmm. us to you know focus on so i think when the right time comes we will definitely announce the plans but i think there's a lot to do in scooter market wow. even now uh market is still 6% right it's hardly anything so it's a big big uh, market share for us to uh, capture now and i think scooter will do way better than motorcycles as of today uh, and i think uh, we are primarily focused on that because some innovations are still un- uh, untouched i think we should do that in 2025 so currently you are uh, catering to the premium market with the simple one or simple dot one which are priced Over. I think uh, yeah I think I I just quoted this a uh, few hours back uh, premium market doesn't really stand now premium has shifted to from 1.5 to 1.8 mm-hmm. any scooter which is above 1.8 any product around that is above 1.8 is called premium now I think now 1.3 to 1.6 is a normal market no. so I don't call it a premium market anymore although in premium market we are or or that market that 1.3 to 1.6 we are the most valuable uh, product out there and which value for money speaks volumes so can we expect a budget scooter from simple energy uh, somewhere around i think we are already two. budgeted enough i would say i think we are at 1.45 at the lowest end i think we are we are offering well uh, in terms of the product itself i don't i, I don't think there is a need of uh, anything else apart from this two scooters in the daily use uh, for a consumer i think we are comfortable because it gives you uh, more than a family scooter uh, you know uh, Uh, this thing is uh, both spaces that is 35 liters on offer mm-hmm. uh, you have 200 plus kilometers of range 248 sorry uh, and you have a 0 to 14 a 2.7 seconds i think i don't think apart from this three things and the boot space of 35 liters you need anything more and we have a upright position better ergonomics very comfortable seats and a very comfortable uh, you know bra- uh, sorry suspensions and a great brick on offering i think we have cornered every uh, you know department here and i think it's a balanced scooter to offer and 1.45 it starts with with a dot one i think more or less we are there in the affordable segment as of today and uh, uh, if you don't mind me asking what caused the delays in deliveries and expansion like you were in the market from 2023 Uh, 2021 yes 2023 may uh, 2023 may you rolled yeah. out your first yeah we, and we delivered uh, first batch in june not 2023 uh, yeah so we we kind of delayed about uh, 10 months from there uh, the primarily because we were selling batches uh, second our production ramp was kind of taken a hit uh, not because uh, of of certain uh, you know x factor of or or uh, you know something that was not in our control but we took a conscious call of you know you know ironing out all the production supply chain issues etc and of course we were looking at a funding around that at that time and that kind of delayed our plans there which got through in april this year uh, once we got through that we immediately started putting expansion plans and august is when we opened our first store uh, officially and and from there we opened 10 stores in in uh, 45 days of time span and since then we have been expanding now we have 20 stores going live immediately uh, so i think that 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 kind of t- took a uh, hit for us definitely in that market share perspective but i think whatever happens happens for a reason i think we have more mature uh, uh, you know process now and that will deliver a better scooter on and uh, as and we expand and i don't think we'll be worried about quality or any other format i think it's 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 to do with two things you look at it in a positive or a negative way i think we are looking at it in a positive way but i definitely agree we have delayed by a significant time and that caused us uh some market share there but more or less uh, you know we can we can make it up because market is very small for us to you know operate so uh where do you see yourself in the coming 6 months and uh, you talked about the coming 20 stores where are you planning to open these stores in the southern part western part or see uh 20 stores a uh, 10 is already left 10 will be live so that they are in karnataka we have two more uh, gujarat we have one pune uh, you know we have one goa we are opening one more kochi uh, sorry kerala we are opening one more chennai is opening and we have a hyderabad one more opening so i think this is where 10 stores are and hubli and other markets which are a little bit smaller markets than bangalore is so i think that is where our expansion is and apart from that we have more plans in uh and by march we are looking at north belt as well to start with but till march will be you know confined in uh, gujarat maharashtra and south belt i think that is where we are our confinement will be but apart from that uh, you know uh, in next 6 months we are looking at uh, last month we were about 
14 to 15 player uh, in, in terms of number of vehicles sold. Of course, we sold more than that, but Wahan doesn't reflect uh, <laughs> as many. Uh, so because Telangana doesn't uh, fall under that. Hmm. So we're doing well in all the markets that we have been launched. Uh, and I think that is a great response for us. And that's why we announced the aggressive plan because we are confident about the product itself and how the response has been. And next six months, we should hopefully be in the top uh, six uh, players, at least in, in the EV segment. And we should, you know, ideally dominate a larger market share going forward. And I think uh, around 80 to 90 stores in the next six months is the ideal target for us to expand in. 80 cities, I mean, sorry. Uh, so hopefully we'll be there uh, in that plan. And we have a few other updates that will come along on the school trade, sir. Okay. Uh, so my last question will be about the recent budget, the recent announcement. Uh, the recent announcements made by the finance minister. What's your take on it? See, uh, the tax, uh, you know, uh, cut our the tax relief till twelve point seven five uh, will definitely boost, uh, you know, like automobile industry because a lot of people will have a larger disposable income to, uh, you know, work upon, and they'll definitely go for uh, maybe a four wheeler or a two wheeler. Two wheeler for sure, I believe, and that'll definitely boost. The economy of uh, economics, how automobile consumption is going to happen over the next at least five years. Uh, at the same time, uh, the reduction of uh, the basic custom duty uh, will help uh, you know, local manufacturing. And I think another uh, 38 or 40 items that they have, uh, you know, uh, removed the BCD on. I think that will only lower our cost of manufacturing, which is in turn we can pass on to the consumer. I think it's a positive move. It will only boost uh, automobile industry, especially the EV industry. I think that is a that is a good takeaway from this budget, and I'm very very uh, positive and happy about how things have fared out, and and big relief for a middle class and upper middle class uh, you know segment. I think they are the backbone there, and they'll definitely be the larger consumer base for any automobile industry, be it uh, Hyundai's or Kratos or sorry Hyundai's and uh, Gia's or Maruti's or or uh, Mahindra's or be it uh, TVS or Bajaj or Raj or anyone else. I think it will only boost our market share. So, thank you Suhas for talking to us. My pleasure. And we'll be soon riding the new Simple One Gen 1.5 and for the detailed review, stay tuned to 91 Wheels. I'm your host Shapran Shu and we'll meet soon. Thank you. Thank you.